Hey guys, Jacob here with ePool Supply. Today, we're gonna install a Pentair Variable Speed VS and Teleflow pump. Stay tuned. All right guys, and we're back. So today, I've got a brand new and Teleflow, Pentair and Teleflow VS pump. It's an 011028. And then I've also got two of custom molded products, high temp unions. So these are awesome when plumbing it in, it makes your job a lot easier. And it also makes the pump serviceable, which is really nice. And we'll dive into that when we install it. So today we got a very basic system. So we got a Hayward pump, a Hayward filter. Um, and this is a uh, just a suction cleaner pool. So I have a cleaner on one side and a skimmer on the other side. So we're gonna do a step-by-step -step process of how to actually remove the old pump and install the new pump and then go into programming, basic programming today. So the first thing we're gonna do is to turn off this breaker. So I'm gonna open up the, the panel find the breaker that says pool pump and I'm going to turn it off. And now we're going to go back to the pump and we're going to test that just to make sure everything is off. So now that we turn the breaker off and we uh, have no power coming back here, we're going to take the back end of this motor off and disconnect the electrical first. So first things first, I'm going to take the screw off that holds the J box together. So. We have our power coming in, so what I want to do, Hayward provides this little adorable little protector. So what I'm going to do first is take my power tester, and I want to verify that the power is completely turned off. So I put it to AC, because this is a 220 AC, and I'm going to test both of these. So it's very true, I do not have any power coming to this pump, so I'm okay. Disconnect and pull the power out. So now that I got the electrical disconnected, I'm going to pull the wires out of the conduit fitting and just leave my electrical hanging out to the side like that. So now I can unscrew my conduit fitting if I want to, but more than likely, I'm just going to replace it. And then also I need to undo my bond wire, which is on the side of the pump right here. So there's a little screw holding it in. If you can't access it right now, you can always undo it after you cut the pump out. So now the nice part is that these pumps are unionized, so I can either undo both unions to go or I can start cutting the plumbing out. All right, so now I'm gonna cut out the plumbing. Um, so what you can either use are two inch pipe cutters like this, so the big bulky pipe cutters, or a uh, sawzall. So um, I really like using these. They're pretty easy and efficient. Um, but yeah, let's dive in. So what I like to do when I cut them out is you'll see the fitting right here and it ends, that's where I like to cut the suction side out. That make, makes it less plumbing and additions and everything you gotta do in the suction in case the new pump lines up. So first I'll cut that out. And then now I like to redo all the plumbing from the filter all the way over to the pump. So what I'll do is I'll leave enough room to add on or maybe up top here at that fitting. So what I'll do is I'll cut below that 90. And now I can remove my pump. So now as you see, the pump is gone. And one thing to look for when the pump is gone is that you have a decent slab still. So this slab is not cracked. It's actually in very good condition. So we're just gonna reuse the slab that's here on the job site and uh, put the new pump on. So what I'm gonna do is grab the new pump, put it in place. And what you notice, it does not line up. So now we're going to end up raising up this valve in front of the pump. So what I'm going to do is take this high temp union, thread it on there, just kind of get a gauge of where everything's going to go. So yeah, you see how I have to line it up. So yeah, now we got to dive into a little bit more advanced plumbing and lift that valve up. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I'm going to be doing is the first thing you do is make sure that the pool level is below these pipes. So that way, if I cut this pipe down here, it's not going to flood the pool out on top of me right now. So I've already verified that. So that's why I'm going to cut this freely. 
So I just pick a spot that you can add plumbing to. So I'll probably just come down here. And down. And then also this side too. Okay. So now that this is off, this is where it gets kind of tricky. But first things first, I'm gonna put my high temp unions on because once I start attaching, I'm gonna start officially attaching everything. So for, wait. so now we have the high temp unions, we're gonna throw some lube on there. So we recommend Magic Lube number two from Aladdin. Uh, it's a good, good, good strength lube that's gonna really seal this thing up good. As you can see here, it's got threads on the end of this, um, the union. You don't need to put Teflon tape on there. You don't need to put joint stick on there. Um, once you lube the O-ring that surrounds there, that's a good enough seal. So now that that's all lubed up, I'm gonna put up, go ahead and put this uh, right on the pump. And just a snug tight. So I'm not gonna take any tools to it. I'm not gonna take anything to it that's really aggressive. I'm just gonna make it snug tight. So now I'm gonna do my second one. Somewhere. I'm not sitting on it. Oh, no, my handy dandy assistant, just go ahead and throw it to me. So again, I'm gonna thread it on there. Snug, and then tighten the top part too. So that way, everything's nice and snug. Not over tightens, not any channel locks or wrenches, just hand tight. Now, we can start plumbing. So now, I'm gonna grab my glue and primer. All right, so what I have now is I've got my pool primer, and then I have my pool heavy uh, 746 well on glue. Well done glue. This is the glue that I really like to plumb all my equipment stuff with. It's just a tight, really high strength glue. And then primer wise, I use all clear primer. Again, well done pool primer is clear. So it all looks like water, it smells like acetone. Um, pretty strong stuff. But yeah, pretty straightforward. So what I'm gonna do first is this handy dandy little tool that I just, uh, or the piece of valve that I just cut off, I'm actually gonna plumb it right back on now. So first things first, you take your primer and clean the surface. I mean, it's always a good idea to uh, take a rag and then clean off the surface with the rag and it kind of heats up the paint a little bit better, which is great that's already on the, the plumbing. And I throw a little bit extra on there and then clean off the inside of your new surface. And then, Andy Danny assistant didn't open the glue very well. <laughs> so now, do a good amount of glue. Just kind of rub the surface in a circle pattern until it's all adhered to. And then you do the inside of the new surface of the union and then slide around. Let me see if there's a level inside my bag. Cool, so she's on there. And a good way to do this too, when you're about to attach it on there, is grab a level and set it on top of the two screws. And that way you can actually level out your equipment set and pipe pipes to make sure it's all nice and flat, which is a good idea. So, but the nice part about doing a unionized pump is the fact that it can always turn because it's on a union. So we can adjust that later. So now on the suction side, we gotta raise the plumbing up. So, yeah. um, so what we're gonna do is slide this in front again. And it looks so close, but even though it looks close, even though it looks close, it's not close enough. You want the pipes to virtually touch if you're gonna put a coupling on there. So if you put a coupling on there, it might work, but more than likely it won't work. You'll have a leak, a suction leak over time. So I'm gonna show you the proper way to actually extend the, the, the plumbing up. So what I'm gonna do first is cut out a giant section of pipe on each side. So what I'll do is I'm gonna lower this one down a little bit 
So as you can see here, I'll just go down here. And this one will load this one too. And then up here to give myself some room to work with. What you always want to do is a coupling has a line down the middle. Always leave yourself a minimum amount, which is about an inch and a half from like any type of surface. So I'm going to want to be at least an inch and a half down. So what I'll do is I will cut probably close to two inches down. And the same thing on the other side. Okay, so now, this is the fun part. So back your pump up, and then what I'm gonna do is grab some pipe and some couplings with my handy dandy assistant. Grab some couplings. <laughs> so I've got two inch PVC couplings. I'm gonna need one more. Oh, right there next to my foot. So you need four couplings to raise the PVC up like this. So the first thing I'm gonna do is, is plumb in my lower couplings. So again, I'm gonna prime my surfaces. And then I'm gonna glue. So just half the coupling, because you don't wanna glue the whole coupling because that'll ruin the top half. So what I'll do is prime my other coupling now. Reprime prime this one. And again, I'm only gonna glue this first half. Always glue both surfaces, not just one. So now that that's on there, now I need my PVC pipe. Thanks, Pono. <laughs> so what I'll do is again, prime, always prime. It's a good prepper for your glue. Makes everything stick good. Nothing here has to be scientifically measured right now. So we're just kind of rough plumbing everything in. Make a mess on your glue, take a rag, clean it off. It makes the job nice and clean still. Okay, so now again, rough plumb. So I'm gonna cut off some of that pipe. Now I'm going to reuse the other end to glue this side in. Just like that. So now that my two pipes sticking up are in, now I can pretty much, I'm going to put my pump in front of the new pipes again. So now I'm going to have my level, level things out. Not even close. And again, because we put the union on here, you can turn this at any time, even after you glue things in. So now that I'm straight, I'm going to line these two up. And then what I'll do is I'll make score cuts where this pipe back here touches this pipe. So what I'll do is I'm gonna come down here, touch them together, cut right there. And now I'm gonna go my other side, cut right there. Now I know exactly where to cut. So I'm gonna back my pump off. Now I know exactly where to cut to make everything a perfect fit. Let's go ahead and cut these off. So now when I put this back on there, theoretically, the pipes should be almost touching, if not touching each other. Just like that. That's exactly what you want. So now both sets of these pipes are good to glue a coupling on there and join these two together. I'll back the pump off again. 
Put my couplings on. Again, prime first. When it's new pipe, it's a lot easier to prime things, except when you cut it, you have shavings everywhere. And then that goes on there like that. Clean up your mess. Make sure it's on there. Grab my other guy. Clean it up. Glue it on. So now we're ready to actually attach these valves back onto the existing plumbing. So again, one more set of cleaning up the pipes. So again, this, this, everything I'm doing right now is if you just want to reuse the current valve that you have. If we were to plumb in a new valve, it would probably be a lot easier. Um, again, it's just you have to have the expense of buying a new valve, but there's nothing wrong with this valve. So that's why we're going to reuse this one. It's relatively new. Pool's only a few years old. So again, right now I'm going to do both at the same time. So I'm going to glue everything at once and then sit my entire valve manifold on both pipes at the same time. That way it sits in there all nice and pretty. So now you just bring it forward, pop her down. Now our suction side is properly plumbed in with no gaps. So that way I know this thing is not going to leak air or suck air at any time. Perfect. So now we're going to plumb the output of the pump. We're going to go from the output here into the filter. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to extend this pipe straight up. And then I'll show you how to work it from there, which makes it super, super easy to work with. What I like to do is take some rags and shield the pump from any type of uh, glue or primer that I'm going to spill on it. So again, first things first, take my primer, clean my pipes. You can always clean anything extra too, so I'm going to clean this guy, clean this one off a little bit too. And now I can uh, put some glue on here, glue my coupling. Let's see that on there nice and pretty. Take my glue rag, clean her off. Okay, so now this looks complicated, I know. However, if you have a tape measure, it makes things real easy. We always want pipes to touch, so not overlapping, just to touch. So what I'm gonna do is measure from this pipe all the way to the end of this pipe. So it's 19 and a quarter. So I'm gonna cut off 19 and a quarter of new PVC. Thank you, Pono. So I'm gonna measure 19 and a quarter. You can use a Sharpie, you can use a pen to mark your spot. Um, I've been doing this a while, so I kinda score it again. So now, this should slide in just like that. See, that's perfect. Because if you can actually slide it in there and it almost wants to stay without you holding it, that's a perfect cut pipe. Now you two 90s. Again, my handy dandy assistant just handed me two more 90s. Thanks, Pono. So this is the weird part is I'm gonna take my rag shield the concrete and some of the plumbing over here. I'm gonna glue this part first, but first what I'm gonna do is attach this 90 to this pipe that I just cut. Plumb it on push real hard, sit there for about five seconds. When you let go, if this pipe starts popping out, just push and wait until get about 30 seconds. But this glue is pretty solid. If you're gluing this in the really cold temperatures, that's when we see the pipes that usually start to back off a little bit. 
So just press and hold, but right now it's like 90 degrees here in Phoenix, Arizona. So we don't have that problem a whole lot. So now I'm gonna plumb this pipe onto this pipe. So what I'm gonna do is just glue and primer. So what I'm gonna do is push it on there and then turn. Push it on and turn and line it up exactly with this pipe. That's it. So that way it's perfectly lined up. So now what I wanna do is again, where these two pipes meet, that's where I wanna cut. So I'm gonna grab my saw and I'm gonna cut right that knife, right at that joint. I'm gonna do this left-handed so you guys can see it, but this might work. Cool. All right, so now you see here, this corner right here, these pipes aren't touching. That's exactly what you want. So now you're probably thinking, well, how the heck am I gonna put that 90 on there? PVC and pool equipment, unionized, unionized, unionized. Things bend, okay? That's the beauty of this. So even if everything was hard piped in, say this was hard piped in here, the pool filter has a union. Something usually has a union. If you're doing pipes underground, dig a big hole, the pipe will bend a little bit. So PVC likes to bend and give you a little bit of give, not too much, so be careful, but always make your plumbing really tight with no variances. So again, I'm gonna clean all my surfaces. You have little shavings hanging off like this. Try to get rid of them. There we go. So now, glue both sides of your 90, both sides of your pipe. Then put your 90 on, put your 90 on, push it together, push it down, and then make sure you're good to go. And honestly, that is exactly how you plumb any pool pump in. So this is not just for an IntelliFlow, but for virtually any pool pump, which is kind of nice. So we're all plumbed in, which is fantastic. So this pump is officially plumbed. So now we are going to work on the electrical part and finishing up all of the cosmetic stuff. Um, so yeah, so now let's dive into electrical. All right, so now we're back. So what I did from the last pump was I removed the conduit completely. And what I like to do is, obviously we're here in Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, the sun likes to eat up these conduits pretty heavily. So I like to just at least replace the conduit every time I do a pump, if it's relatively new, if it's got older wiring, or if it's not at least a 12 gauge wire, I like to uh, replace the entire electrical whip as well that goes back to the main. Um, it's probably just a good idea in general to always have a good power supply and a good whip for water protection. So what I'm gonna do is just unthread this. It just comes right out. And then I take my new one, kind of match up the sizes. And then what I'll do is I'll cut. So as you're watching me do this, feel free to hit that subscribe button, kind of subscribe to our channel. We got some new videos that come out pretty frequently, some new cool stuff that you might be able to see. So hit that subscribe button, help us out, and uh, we'll keep you posted on future stuff. So I got my new conduit. So what, I, what I'm gonna do is just slide this on, real easy. Just threads right in. So now that I threaded all that out equally, so now I know it's gonna fit properly. So with this IntelliFlow, um, I'm not sure if you remember that Hayward that I took out had the one screw with that panel that came off. So this has four screws. So you're gonna take all the four perimeter screws off to access the electronics in the inside. So what I'll do first is take these screws out with a Phillips. As you notice, if you open the panel, it's got torques on the inside of here. That's a big indicator of don't unscrew that. So 
now that all four of those are out, this panel just literally nicely lifts up and you can just put it to the side like so. So it's not heavy by any means. It's not going to do anything. You just leave it there, hang it there. It's okay to do that. Nothing to worry about. So what I'm going to do first is take my conduit fitting and I'm going to thread it in there. In this case, we're using a 90. You can use a straight. This is all half inch, so make sure you get a half inch NPT threads, national pipe thread. And where did my little coupling go? Yep, there it is. All right. So the little coupling goes on the outside or goes on the inside of the conduit, so you kind of thread it in there. Come on. Just send it back, and now we're just going to feed our wires through. So it's easier if I just cut the old off, the little ends off. And then feed them through. The conduit slides up inside that fitting. It's got little clasps so it locks into place. Just like that. Now the coupling goes on. Everything's hand tight. You don't need to get crazy with tools. And then give a good little snug on your wiring on the inside. So now I got good wires. You can use wire cutters if you want to. I use a pair of dykes. Just kind of grab onto it and go. all you're doing is taking the shielding off. So now first things first, I'm going to hook up my ground. So I'm going to loosen my ground plug, which is somewhat loose from the factory, and then I'm going to throw my ground in there and then tighten it. Hold the wire while you tighten it so it doesn't back off. So now my two hots, so again this is a 220 pump, 230, 240, depending on whatever area you live in and the voltage meter that is there. Um, there's a hot here and a hot here. We're going to just put each leg into one of each. It doesn't matter which one goes where. If you have a 120 volts only with a neutral, this pump will not work for you. We recommend the Pentair Superflow. If you do have 120 volts, you more than likely have a above ground pool or just a simpler pool, I should say. Um, so now you're just going to loosen these plugs again, thread your wire in. You don't want the jacket touching the metal, the black part of the wire or the colored part. If you have a red wire, or purple wire, orange wire, or black wire, you just want copper to metal. So now that my pump is wired, I'm going to put my panel back on. The coolest part about these Pentair panels is when you open this panel up, I can literally have this thing directionally face whichever way I want to. So the access for the customer is where I'm standing, so I'm going to want this panel facing where I'm standing. So I'm going to line her up, and now I'm just going to tighten those screws. Okay, now it seems like I'm done, but I'm not. So, very important part of installing a pool pump is making sure your pool pump has a proper bond. If this pool pump is not bonded and there is an issue down the road with the pump and a Pentair warranty technician comes out, it's not gonna be under warranty. So, please make sure you bond your pumps. The bonding plug is on this far side of the pump. It's the only side that has the bond plug, so you have to run the bond wire over here. Any local hardware store should have bond extenders, bonding clamps, and bonding wire. So if you need to get more, it's usually pretty easy to get. You have to make sure you use a bonding wire, not just some regular copper wire. Now our electrical is done. 
So what I can do now is we're gonna paint all of our pipes. We're gonna fill this pot up with water for the first time and that probably is gonna be the last time you fill it up. Um, and then we're going to fire her on and program it up. So let's go ahead and get going. So now that the pump's plumbed in, the electrical's hooked up, we're gonna go ahead and turn this breaker back on. So again, I'm gonna open my panel up, turn the breaker on. The first thing you wanna check for is that it doesn't immediately trip. So if it trips, that means something's hooked up wrong. So we're good, let's head back over and let's program this pump. All right, so now that Pono painted all these pipes nice and pretty for me, let's see if we can get a picture of Pono up there for you for some credit. Okay, so now we're gonna pop this lid open and we're gonna fill this thing up with water. So this says that it is a self-priming pool pump. That is 100% accurate after the first time you fill it up. So we're gonna go ahead and fill it up. Pono, go ahead. So you're just gonna fill it up until water starts running through the opening of the pump. So you're just, or if you just count to like 20, you're probably safe. So I think we're good. Go ahead, turn it off. Thanks, Pono. So now with the pool pump back on or the lid back on. A good snug, don't need to crank it, just a good snug. It's got a pre-lubed factory O-ring. So again, those O-rings on the very top of your lid, it's always a good idea to lube that about once a month or once every six months. Just, just make sure it's got a good silicone, that number two magic lube on there. And that way it prevents any type of air leaks from the top of the pump. So perfect. We painted our pipes, we installed our pump, we did the electrical, we filled it with water. Let's program this thing so we can fire it up. Okay, so. We just turned our pool pump on, and right now it says nothing. It says zero RPM, zero watts, stopped, everything else. So the first thing that we're gonna do is press menu. And then settings, see how it says save and select? You press select. First thing you wanna do is set the date and time. This is the most important step, because you can put programs in, but if you don't set the date and time, it's gonna run at weird times. So select, one, three, 2010. That's not right. So what I'm gonna do is press select. I'm gonna go over to four. Today I believe is the 17th. 2020, so. So now that it says save question mark, you're not pressing select again, you're pressing the save button. So I'm gonna press save. Perfect, the date, the, the date set. So now I press the up arrow. AM, PM, so if I click that, I can change it to 24 military time if I want to, but I'm gonna keep it at AM, PM and save. I'm gonna press the up arrow again, change the time. So I currently have 10, 16 AM. So what I wanna do is press select, go over to 10 and scroll down and you'll see that my PM changes to AM. And now I can change this to a one Press the right arrow to a six. Again, if I press that select button, it says, nope, can't do that. So you wanna press the save button. Cool, so now my date and time is set. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna set two schedules. What we recommend at ePool Supply is running your pool pumps 24 hours a day. I know that seems kind of aggressive and some of these states or energy companies might say, no, 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 but uh, we like that. And the low speed that we put it on virtually doesn't really cost you a whole lot of anything to run it. So that way your pool's constantly circulating, costs you less in chemicals, and just keeps your pool clean all the time. So I'm gonna go to speed one through eight. Again, so if I'm all the way back here and I press menu, I'm gonna press down to speed one through eight. Select. So everybody recommends you put speeds five and six as your two main uh, speeds because one, two, three, and four should be just cheaters. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to speed five, select. See how it says disabled? I press select, press up, schedule, save, yes. So now this is a scheduled speed. So I'm gonna press up. So I'm gonna make this my low speed. So I'm, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna run this thing from 12.01 a.m. Sure. Oh, that's my stop time. So let me go back to my stop time and I'm gonna make this 12, yeah, let's just keep it at 12 or 1 a.m. 
That's what time it's going to turn off. And my start time, if I go up, I'm going to make it 12.02 a.m. So that way it's starting at 12.02 and turning off 23 hours and 59 minutes later. So if you see here, save. So on at 12.02, off at 12.01, and my RPMs. So what I'm gonna do is set my speed. I like 1750 as my low speed. Obviously every pool is different. You can tune everything in perfectly. And uh, yeah, so it's pretty straightforward. So my low speed, speed five, is gonna be 1750 RPMs. And it's gonna turn on at 12.02, turn off at 12.01. So now let's go back. I wanna go speed six as my high speed. That's what's gonna get my cleaner rolling. So I'm gonna select it. Again, I'm press select. Go to enabled for a schedule. And now I'm gonna go set speed, enter. My high speed, I'm guessing right now, is gonna be a 3000. I haven't tuned in the cleaner yet. We should have videos up here soon on how to tune your cleaner into the variable speed pump. But I'm gonna set it 3000. And again, I'm gonna adjust it later once I actually get my, uh, my RPM indicators on my cleaners. So now that I saved it, I'm gonna go up to start time. So I'm gonna start my high speed at 12 a.m. So that's perfect. So I know it sounds contradictory because it's overlapping my other schedule, but again, the pump's never gonna shut off. So high speed always wins when it comes to an IntelliFlow. So if I have a high speed at the schedule at the same time as a low speed, the high speed will always turn on. So what I'm gonna do now is change my stop time to 8 a.m. We like to have our high speed run eight hours a day to get that pool all nice and clean. Save, and that's it. So now what I wanna do is assign my quick speed one. So if somebody comes over to the pump and turns on the speeds, I can change my speed, it's on manual, or I can change it to an egg timer if I want to, which let's do that, egg timer, save. And then now I wanna to go to I wanna make this like a quick high speed of 3000. That way if somebody comes over and just wants to turn the pump on, say a storm's coming in, we can have an egg timer of how many hours and minutes. So what I'll do is I'm gonna set that to three hour run time. Almost like a timeout mode. So again, this is just quick basic programming of this pump. If you wanna check out our full in-depth programming, check out our other video of how to fully program a Pentair IntelliFlow. So I've got my quick speed number one set up. However, so everything's saved. So now if I press menu, back. Now let's just turn it on and see what happens. Alright guys, so right now I've got this pump running on low speed. You can't even hear it. Thing's awesome. So we painted the pipes, we plumbed everything in, we did the electrical, we literally did everything on how to install this pump today. Hopefully this video helps you guys at home. Again, click that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm Jacob. I'm out.